In this lesson, we are going to discuss trigonometric functions of any angle. We would be discussing the following exercises. In our last video lesson, we discussed trigonometric functions using right triangles. We call that the right triangle approach. In particular, we used Sokatoa. However, that approach only works for acute angles. We are now ready to discuss trigonometric functions of any angles. Suppose that theta is any angle in standard position. Recall that an angle in standard position is an angle whose initial side lies on positive x-axis. And let us take xy to be any point on the terminal side of theta. So suppose that this is my point xy. R is the distance of xy from the origin. Using the distance formula, what is our r? r is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. We can now define the trigonometric function values of theta as follows. Sine theta is the y-coordinate over r. Cosine theta is the x-coordinate over r, and tangent of theta is the quotient of y over x. And of course, you don't have to remember these three functions because they are just the reciprocals of these three trigonometric function values here. So for example, we want to find the exact value of each of the trigonometric functions of a positive angle theta if for negative 3 is a point on its terminal side. The point 4, negative 3 is somewhere here. And therefore, this is the terminal side. But it also says here that theta is a positive angle. So therefore, what is theta? The initial side always starts from the positive x-axis. So this one, this is your theta. Our point 4, negative 3. So by definition, sine of theta is y coordinate over r, which means that we have to solve for r first. And remember that r is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. Or if you want, you can just memorize this as r squared equals x squared plus y squared, meaning to say, x, y, and r satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. What would be your r? So your x is negative 3 squared plus 4 squared equals r squared. And therefore, we get that r is equal to 5. Or if you want, always remember that 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple, meaning to say, it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. So we have r equals 5. I will just write my values here. x is 4, y is negative 3, and r is 5. So therefore, sine theta is negative 3 over 5. Cosine theta, which is equal to x over r, it's equal to 4 fifths. Tangent theta is y over x or negative 3 fourths. And the rest are just reciprocals. Reciprocal of sine theta is cosecant theta, so that's negative 5 thirds. Reciprocal of cosine theta is secant of theta, so this is 5 fourths. And lastly, the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent theta, and that is equal to negative 4 thirds. Let us find the exact value of each of the six trigonometric function values of the following. For number one, theta is equal to zero. If you have zero degrees, then if we just take an arbitrary point here on the terminal side, the terminal side of zero degrees is your x-axis. So we can just take this to be one zero. So we now have x equals 1, y equals 0, but remember that you need your r. r is the distance of this point from the origin, and that is just equal to 1. 
So therefore, cosine of 0 is x-coordinate, which is 1. The re that's the reason why I wanted r to be equal to 1. So that I no longer have to consider my denominator because it's just equal to 1. Sine 0 is the y-coordinate, that's 0. Tangent 0 is y over x. 0 divided by 1 is 0. Reciprocal of cosine is secant 0, that's also 1. Since this is 0, we now have that cosecant 0 is undefined, and so is cotangent of 0. Because you will have a denominator of 0. Next, for pi over 2. Pi over 2 is 90 degrees, correct? Or let us just get an arbitrary point. Let's take this point to be 0, 1. Again, your r there will be equal to 1. So therefore, we have cosine of pi over 2 is equal to the x-coordinate, which is 0. Remember that cosine is x, sine is y. Sine of pi over 2 is the y-coordinate, that's 1. Tangent of pi over 2 is y over x. So that's undefined. For the reciprocal, the reciprocal of cosine is secant. But since this is 0, this is undefined. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So this is also equal to 1. And for cotangent, that is x over y. So this is equal to 0. I will leave it up to you to get the trigonometric function values of theta equals pi and theta equals 270 degrees. It's just very similar to 1 and 2. Next, let us consider the signs of the trigonometric functions. Since we have cosine, let us just consider cosine and sine. Cosine theta is x over r. Sine theta is y over r. Take note that r is always positive because it refers to the distance of the point x, y from the origin. So therefore, the sine will just depend on the values of x and y. So therefore, let us consider quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4. I will just consider... The signs of sine and cosine. You don't have to memorize the signs of the rest because all the other trigonometric function values can be obtained from sine and cosine. Now, in quadrant 1, your x and y are both positive. Therefore, if you get an angle whose terminal side lies on quadrant 1, its cosine and sine will be both positive. How about in quadrant 2? In quadrant 2, your x is negative. So cosine theta is negative. Your y is positive. So that means that sine of theta is positive. In quadrant 3, x is negative. If you get a point here, x is negative and y is negative, right? So therefore, cosine of theta is negative. Sine of theta is negative. And lastly, for quadrant 4, x is positive, y is negative. So cosine theta is positive and sine of theta is negative. So for example, what would be the value of tangent theta in quadrant 1? Remember that tangent of theta is equal to sine over cosine or Tangent theta is y over x, but since both of your x and y here are positive, tangent theta is now positive. Here also, tangent theta is positive because both x and y have the same sign. They are both negative. For example, in quadrant 2, what can we say about secant of theta? Secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So therefore secant theta is also negative. But then again, you don't have to memorize this. Again, as long as you know the values of sine and cosine, you'll be okay. For example, sine theta is 
negative and cosine is positive. Name the quadrant in which the angle lies. So sine is negative, so that means your y value is negative, and cosine is positive, that means that x is positive. Where is that? y is negative and x is positive, so you are in quadrant 4. Next, if tangent theta is equal to negative 4 and sine of theta is less than 0, find the exact value of each of the remaining trigonometric functions of theta. Remember that the first step here is to always identify the quadrant of your angle. Let us try to draw first. Since sine of theta is negative, what quadrant does it belong? This means that y is negative. So it's either in 3 or 4, correct? However, from here, tangent of theta is also negative. In quadrant 3, what can you say about tangent of theta? Here, tangent of theta is positive, right? Because y and x are both negative. So therefore, the answer is quadrant 4. So this one is the sort of tiebreaker. So we now know that it lies in quadrant 4. Step 2 is to get our x, y, and r. How do we do that? Let us write this tangent of theta as negative 4 over 1. But by definition, tangent of theta is y over x. Since we know that we are in quadrant 4, your y is negative and x is positive. But from here, we know that the y value should be negative. Therefore, we can take y to be negative 4 and x to be equal to 1. How do we get r? r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So that is negative 4 squared plus 1 squared. So that is 17. So therefore, our r is square root of 17. And therefore, we now have that. What is our cosine? Cosine theta is x over r, so that's 1 over square root of 17. Sine of theta is y over r, so that's negative 4 over square root of 17. And then for the remaining three trigonometric function values, they are just the reciprocal, so I will no longer write it down. Another approach in defining trigonometric function values would be the circular approach. For that, we need the point function. Suppose that theta is a real number. The point function associates a real number, theta, to a point in R2. What does it do? It associates theta to the point xy, where xy is the point on the unit circle, making an arc length of theta from the point 1, 0 measured clockwise if theta is negative, or measured counterclockwise if theta is positive. So, I have here my point 1, 0. Suppose that this is my theta. It's positive, so therefore it's counterclockwise. This point here, the point on the unit circle, this is your P of theta. That is my xy. So, so this is again my unit circle earlier, meaning to say your r is equal to 1. And if I get my p of theta, this point over here, the nice thing about your unit circle is that your r is already equal to 1. So therefore, if you look at our previous definition of trigonometric function values, all the r's here will just disappear because r is equal to 1. Hence, we have the following. y is equal to sine of theta. Cosine theta is equal to x. Tangent of theta is y over x. And so on and so forth. Notice here that the y value is sine theta 
and the x coordinate is equal to cosine theta. So therefore, we have this unit circle. If you have your unit circle and this is theta, the point P of theta is known to be cosine theta sine theta because the x coordinate is your cosine of theta and your y coordinate is your sine of theta. For example, let us find the values of all trigonometric functions of theta if P of theta is this one. Sine of theta is just the y value, so that's negative square root of 5 over 3. Cosine of theta is the x value, so that's 2 thirds. Take note, class, that I am doing this because this is my P of theta. You already know that R is equal to 1. Tangent of theta is y over x, so that's negative square root of 5 over 3 all over 2 thirds. The 3 will be cancelled, so that's negative square root of 5 over 2. And the rest are just reciprocals. Let us consider the unit function approach in our special angle. So for example, our theta equals 45 degrees or pi over 4. So since this is a unit circle, this is 1. And the x coordinate will be 1 over square root of 2. And the y coordinate is 1 over square root of 2. For 60 degrees, again, this is 1. This is the shorter leg. This is 1 half and the longer leg is square root of 3 over 2. For 30 degrees, look at that. The y value is shorter than the x value, correct? So this is 1 half and this is square root of 3 over 2. Again, this r here is equal to 1. So whenever I get the function values of 30, 60, and 45, I just imagine this unit circle and the triangles. In order to define the trigonometric function values of other angles, we will be using reference angles. What do you mean by reference angles? Let theta denote an angle that lies in a quadrant. The acute angle formed by the terminal side of theta in the x-axis is called the reference angle for theta. So for example, here, this is my theta. So for the diagrams, let alpha be your reference angle. Take note that the reference angle is always formed by the terminal side and the x-axis. So in this case, this is your reference angle. If your angle is in quadrant 4, what is the reference angle? This one. Here, your angle theta is this one. But what is the reference angle? It would be this one. You're always getting the acute angle formed by the terminal side in your x-axis. Let me just draw the corresponding thetas here. Here, this is your theta. It is very important that you know how to get the reference angles for you to get the trigonometric function values of any angles. So let us have some exercises. Number one. Theta is 150 degrees, try to imagine it first. If it's 150 degrees, it lies in what quadrant? It's in quadrant 2, correct? Because this is 90, 180, 270. So therefore, this is my 150 degrees. And what is now my reference angle? That is this angle. This is equal to? 180 minus 150, so that's 30 degrees. For our next angle, theta is equal to 45 degrees. But since 45 degrees lies in quadrant 1, this is 45 degrees. That is also the reference angle. So here the reference angle is 30 degrees. Here it's 45 degrees also. What about something in radians, 9 pi over 4? For us to determine... The quadrant where 9 pi over 4 belongs, we have to write this first in mixed form. 9 fourths is 2 and 
one fourth times pi. So therefore, this is two pi plus pi over four. So therefore, our angle is two pi plus another pi over four. So it lies in quadrant one. So therefore, what is that reference angle? The reference angle is pi over 4 because this is the terminal side and this length over here is pi over 4. Next, we have 7 pi over 6. What is the quadrant containing 7 pi over 6? Whenever you have improper fractions, always write it in mixed form. 7 6 is 1 plus 1 6. So therefore, this is pi plus pi over 6. So therefore, you have pi plus pi over 6. Pi over 6 is just an acute angle, so you will not extend up to this one. This one here is the terminal side, and this is pi over 6, right? Pi plus pi over 6. And therefore, what is the reference angle? The reference angle is this one also, pi over 6. So, in these exercises, it's very important that you have to identify the quadrant containing your angle. Why are reference angles important? If theta is an angle that lies in a quadrant and if alpha is its reference angle, then it turns out that the trigonometric function values of theta will just be the same as the trigonometric function values of its reference angle except that they will just differ in the sign. That's why you have plus or minuses here. I will show this in the next examples. Another important thing that you have to know are coterminal angles. We say that two angles in standard position are said to be coterminal if they have the same terminal side. So from the word itself, co means same, terminal terminal side. So that's why you have same terminal side. So for example, here your A and your B. Your B is a negative angle whereas A is a positive angle but they have the same terminal side. So therefore, they are said to be coterminal. Now here, A is this um, angle here. It's more than 180 degrees but for your B, it's one revolution and then plus the measurement of angle A. So they are also coterminal. We are now ready to find the exact values of different trigonometric function values of any angle. So number one, sine of 390 degrees. First, you have to draw where is 390 degrees? 390 degrees is more than 360. It is already more than one revolution. This is 360 plus 30 degrees. So therefore, where is the terminal side? The terminal side is the same as the terminal side of 30 degrees. Because 390 is 360 plus 30. And therefore, if we now consider your unit circle, we will always be using the unit circle approach. Let's say that is a unit circle. What are these points? This is the shorter leg, so that is one half. And the longer leg is square root of 3 over 2. So this is the point, square root of 3 over 2, one half. So therefore, sine of 390 is the y coordinate. So therefore, it's equal to 1 half. Next, number 2. We have cosine of 420 degrees. It's already more than 360. So let us subtract 420 from 360. That is 60 degrees. So therefore, 420 is 360 plus 60 degrees, correct? So it is coterminal with 60 degrees. We know that this is equal to 60 degrees. This is the longer side, so that's square root of 3 over 2. The shorter side is 1 half. And therefore, what is this point? The x-coordinate is 1 half square root of 3 over 2. So therefore, 
this is equal to 1 half. So in this case, we haven't used reference angles because it turns out that for this two angles here, they are coterminal with our special angles, 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Let us consider angles in radians, 9 pi over 4. So earlier, we knew that we have to write this first as mixed form. 9 pi over 4 is 2 pi plus pi over 4. So therefore, this is coterminal with pi over 4, right? So therefore, this is just the same as tangent of pi over 4, right? Because when you draw your unit circle, 9 pi over 4, this point will just lie on the same point as p of pi over 4. And what is tangent of pi over 4? It's equal to 1. For our next example, we have secant of negative 7 pi over 4. First, we write 7 pi over 4 in mixed form. That is pi plus 3 pi over 4. If you round this off, it is closest to 2 pi. Correct? So this is less than 2 pi or we write it as 8 pi over 4. We have our unit circle over here. Since we have a sign of negative, that means that we are going clockwise. So if you have negative 8 pi over 4, but this is just negative 7 pi over 4. So we go back by pi over 4. This is negative 8 pi over 4. And then this one here is negative 7 pi over 4. So therefore, it is just coterminal with pi over 4. So hence, this is the same as secant of pi over 4. And secant of pi over 4 is just the reciprocal of cosine pi over 4. What is cosine of pi over 4? Cosine of pi over 4 is 1 over square root of 2. So therefore, its reciprocal is square root of 2. Lastly, we have cosecant of negative 270 degrees. Again, let us draw our unit circle. Where is negative 270 degrees? This is negative, so we go clockwise. This is negative 90, negative 180, and this is negative 270. So this is P of negative 270 degrees. And what is this? This is the point 0, 1. What is cosecant? That is the reciprocal of sine. And for the sine, what is the sine of negative 270 degrees? Sine is the y coordinate, so it's 1. So therefore, the reciprocal is also equal to 1. Let us have some more examples. Sine of 135 degrees. But since it is 135, you go back by... 45 degrees. So therefore, its reference angle is 45 degrees. This is now where we use reference angles. If we look at now our 45 degrees, what is the point corresponding to 45 degrees in our unit circle? That is 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2. But since we are looking at sine, we are looking at its y coordinate correct and its y coordinate is also equal to 1 over square root of 2 because these two triangles over here are congruent so for me what i do is i always draw it so sine 135 degrees is the same as sine of 45 degrees which is equal to 1 over square root of 2. Next, let us consider cosine of 600 degrees. Where is 600 degrees? 600 degrees is already greater than 360. So therefore, 600 degrees is between 360, but of course, it's less than 2 revolutions. So we write 600 as, what is that? 360 plus... 240 degrees. So therefore, 
I am here at 360 degrees, I will go by another 240 degrees. What is 240 degrees? This is 180 plus 60. So here is 180 and then another 60 degrees. So that is your reference angle. Now, if you look at your 60 degree angle, what is this? The longer side is square root of 3 over 2 and the shorter side is 1 half. So this is the point 1 half square root of 3 over 2, right? But since you are on the third quadrant, that would just mean that the x-coordinate is 1 half but it's negative. So this is negative 1 half, negative square root of 3 over 2. So therefore, cosine of 600 is negative 1 half. Some more examples. Cosine of 27 pi over 4. 27 pi over 4. When you round it off, this is closest to what integral multiple of pi? 28 pi over 4 or 7 pi, right? So if you are on 7 pi, remember that here you will end up here if you are an even multiple of pi. 0, 2 pi. 4 pi, 6 pi, and so on, and the negatives, of course. In here, this will be the odd multiples of pi. You have negative pi, you have pi, 3 pi, and their negatives, right? So since we have 7 pi, let's look at 27 pi over 4. Your 28 pi over 4 is here, but it's 27 pi over 4. So therefore, you go back by pi over 4. Correct? So that's why I know that my reference angle is pi over 4 as well. But for pi over 4, this is 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2. So that's for cosine. So the cosine is also the same as the cosine of pi over 4. But since you are on the second quadrant, cosine must be negative. So this is negative cosine of pi over 4, so that is negative 1 over square root of 2. Next, we have tangent of negative pi over 3. Where is that? Negative pi over 3, so that means that we go clockwise by pi over 3. So the reference angle is also pi over 3. Let me just draw my pi over 3 here. This is the point that we are considering. What is this? The x is shorter, so that's 1 half square root of 3 over 2. So this is the same as the tangent of its reference angle, which is pi over 3. However, in quadrant 4, the sign of tangent is negative correct so therefore it's negative what is tangent of pi over 3 y over x is square root of 3 some more examples secant of 2 pi over 3 we have two angles 2 pi over 3 and pi over 6 you always draw your unit circle 2 pi over 3 is this one and what is its reference angle that is pi over 3. And for pi over 3, the x-coordinate is shorter. So that's 1 half. The y-coordinate is longer. And let me just draw also for pi over 6. Pi over 6 is small. That's 30 degrees. So therefore, the x-coordinate is longer. Square root of 3 over 2 is greater than 1 half. So now we are ready. Secant of 2 pi over 3, what is this? This is the reciprocal of cosine. 
right? What is the cosine of 2 pi over 3? Since you are on the second quadrant, the x-coordinate is negative. So this is negative 1 half. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. So its secant is negative 2 times cosecant of pi over 6. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Sine is the y-coordinate. So therefore, cosecant is 2 plus Cosecant of 2 pi over 3, that is the reciprocal of sine. Sine is the y-coordinate, so that's 2 over square root of 3. And lastly, secant of pi over 6 is the reciprocal of cosine of pi over 6. Cosine is the x-coordinate, and the reciprocal is 2 over square root of 3. So it's negative 4 plus 4 over 3. So therefore, it's negative 8 over 3. Next, let us have 2 secant of 0. This is the reciprocal of cosine 0. What is cosine of 0? Cosine of 0 is 1. If you are 0 degrees, P of 0 degrees is 1, 0. Next, we want cotangent squared of 5 pi over 3. Where is 5 pi over 3? 5 pi over 3 is closer to what integral multiple of pi? 2 pi or 6 pi over 3. You only have a difference of pi over 3. So this is already 2 pi, but it's only 5 pi over 3. So you go back by pi over 3. That is 5 pi over 3 is 6 pi over 3 minus pi over 3. Since we are interested with cotangent, it's the same as the cotangent of pi over 3. What is this point again? This is 1 half square root of 3 over 2. So cotangent is 1 over square root of 3. Cotangent of pi over 3 is x over y. 1 over square root of 3. So therefore, cotangent of 5 pi over 3, you are in the fourth quadrant. So cotangent here is negative. But of course, it doesn't really matter. We will get its square. So therefore, we have 4 times the square of 1 over square root of 3 is 1 third plus 2 times what is cosine of 2 pi. For 2 pi, you are here, right? And this is the point 1, 0. For cosine, you need your x coordinate. So it's just 1. So therefore, it's 2 plus 2. That's 4 plus 4 thirds or 16 over 3. Let us have another example. Cosine of theta is negative 2 thirds and P of theta is in quadrant 3. Find the five other circular function values of theta. So here I will be using a combination of your x, y, r. All right. So remember that the first step is to determine the quadrant, but we already know that P of theta is in quadrant 3, right? So if you are in quadrant 3, your x and y are both negative, correct? And we have cosine theta equals negative 2 thirds, and cosine is, I will be using the x over r. This is x over r, and of course, r is always positive. So we therefore take x to be negative 2. Our r is 3, and let us solve for y. r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So r is 3, and then squared, negative 2 squared plus y squared. 
So we have y squared is equal to 9 minus 4, so that's 5. I already have here the sign of y. y is the negative square root of 5. So that's why it is very important that you have to determine the quadrant where theta lies. Because for here, you actually have y equals plus or minus square root of 5, correct? The only way to determine whether you will get positive or negative is the quadrant of theta. Alright, so I now have x, y, and r, so I can get the rest of the trigonometric function value. So we already have cosine. Our sine theta is y over r, so that's negative square root of 5 over 3. Tangent theta is y over x. And the reciprocals. Another example, same thing again. Tangent of theta is negative 2 thirds and cosine of theta is greater than 0. Step 1, find the quadrant. First, we have cosine of theta is positive, so that means the x-coordinate. Cosine theta is positive, that means you belong in quadrant 1 or 4, correct? x is positive. What will be the tiebreaker? You want your tangent to be negative. So that means that we will choose quadrant 4. Step 2, find our x, y, and r. Since x lies in quadrant 4, x is positive and y is negative. And to determine x, y, and r, we will use this one. Tangent of theta is negative 2 over square root of 3. This is y over x. Since y is negative and x is positive, we take y to be negative 2 and x to be equal to positive square root of 3. Solving for our r, we have... Square root of x squared plus y squared, we get r is square root of 7. So cosine of theta is x over r. Sine theta is y over r. We already have tangent theta, the reciprocal secant of theta is square root of 7 over 3. Cosecant theta is negative square root of 7 over 2. And of course, cotangent theta is negative square root of 3 over 2. To help us more with our evaluation of trigonometric function values, let us discuss the period of a function. A function f is called periodic if there is a positive number p, such that whenever theta is in the domain of f, so is theta plus p, and f of theta is equal to f of theta plus p. Meaning to say, after p units, the value of f will repeat. If there is smallest such number p, the smallest value is called the fundamental period of f. Let me illustrate this. Let us consider the trigonometric function values with period of 2 pi. So I have here your angle theta. So this point is P of theta. If we consider the angle theta plus 2 pi, it will also end here. So therefore, P of theta is the same as P of theta plus 2 pi. What does this mean? P of theta is equal to cosine of theta sine of theta and p of theta plus 2 pi is equal to cosine of theta plus 2 pi sine of theta plus 2 pi. However, since we have seen here that these two points are equal, we now know that cosine of theta, the x-coordinates are the same. 
and the y coordinate should also be the same. Therefore, cosine and sine functions have a period of 2 pi. What else? The reciprocals would also have a period of 2 pi, right? The reciprocal of cosine is secant. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So these four values over here would have a period of 2 pi. What about the two remaining trigonometric functions, tangent and its reciprocal, cotangent? Well, it turns out that they have a period of pi. To see why that is so, let us consider theta and theta plus pi. This is pi. So this is p of theta plus pi. Now, if you will look at their x and y coordinates, take note that if this is equal to a and this is equal to b, since these two triangles over here are congruent, this length is also equal to a. However, x here is negative. So, so therefore, the x-coordinate is negative a. This side over here should also be equal to b. So therefore, this y-coordinate must be negative b. So therefore, p of theta plus pi is negative a, negative b, whereas p of theta is equal to a, b. And therefore, the tangent of theta, which is equal to y over x, b over a, and the tangent of theta plus pi is equal to y-coordinate over x-coordinate, which is also the same as b over a. And therefore, we have shown that tangent theta is equal to tangent of theta plus pi. And the reciprocal would also have the same period. Therefore, the only two functions with period of pi would be tangent and cotangent. We can now use the periods of trigonometric functions to find the exact value. For example, tangent of 35 pi over 3. Let us write this first as a mixed number. That is 11 pi plus 2 pi over 3. You no longer have to draw 35 pi over 3 just like what we did earlier. We now know that tangent has a period of pi, and therefore, we can disregard this 11 pi. After integral multiples of pi, you will just get the same value. So therefore, this is tangent of 2 pi over 3. And what is tangent of 2 pi over 3? All you have to do now is to draw 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is in the second quadrant with reference angle of pi over 3, and this is x coordinate is negative 1 half, y coordinate is square root of 3 over 2. So therefore, the tangent is negative square root of 3. What about for cosecant? 420 is 360 plus 60 degrees. 360 is the same as 2 pi, right? Cosecant has a period of 2 pi or 360 degrees. So therefore, this is just the same as cosecant of 60 degrees. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, and sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. So therefore, this is 2 over square root of 3. We can also use the even and odd properties of trigonometric function values. First, what do we mean by an even function? We say that a function is even if f of x is equal to f of negative x for all x in its domain. So this one is saying that f absorbs the negative sign. Why is this called even? Because if you have a polynomial function whose exponents are all even, let's say x squared plus x4, if you look at f of negative x, this is the square of negative x squared plus the square of negative x. This is the same as x squared plus x4, which is the same as 
f of x. So, in general, a polynomial whose exponents of x are all even is an even function. A function is said to be an odd function whenever f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. Meaning to say for odd functions, if you have negative inside, it goes up. Why is it called an odd function? If we consider polynomials whose degrees are all odd. Let's say x cubed plus x. Let us compute f of negative x. That's negative x cubed plus negative x. This is equal to negative x cubed minus x. And this is precisely the negative of x cubed plus x. So therefore, this is the negative of f of x. Why is it called an odd function? Polynomials whose exponents are all odd would be odd functions. So let us consider which functions are even and odd. Let's look at this point. What is this point? This is the point corresponding to theta. So this is cosine theta, sine theta. This is the point corresponding to negative theta. So this is cosine negative theta, sine of negative theta. However, again, if you look at these two triangles over here, they are congruent. Look at this. Their x coordinates are the same. So cosine theta is cosine of negative theta, but for the sine of theta, this length is the same as this length, except that they have different signs. This is sine theta, and this is negative sine of theta. So therefore, the y-coordinate sine of negative theta is equal to negative of sine theta. What about for tangent? What can you say about the tangent of negative theta? Well, their x and y coordinates are just the same except for the signs. Here, the tangent is positive, whereas here, the tangent is negative. So therefore, tangent of negative theta is negative tangent of theta. And of course, for their reciprocals, so we have secant of theta is secant of negative theta. If we get the reciprocal of this, we get cosecant of negative theta is negative cosecant of theta. And lastly, cotangent of negative theta is equal to negative cotangent of theta. So therefore, our even functions are just cosine and its reciprocal. And the odd functions would be the rest. Sine, tangent, cosecant, and cotangent. So this is the summary of what we have just shown. So we can now use these properties to find the exact values of the following. We no longer have to draw the angle in clockwise direction. From our property of sine, sine is an odd function, so the negative goes out. So sine of negative 45 is negative sine 45 degrees. So therefore, this is negative 1 over square root of 2. What about cosine of negative 3 pi? Cosine is an even function. So therefore, this is cosine of 3 pi. 3 pi, you will end up here. So that's negative 1, 0. So the cosine is negative 1. Lastly, for tangent of negative 37 pi over 4, we will use our period and even and odd property. So first, tangent is an odd function. So I will move this out. Tangent of 37 pi over 4. And then we write this in mixed form. What is 37? That is 9 pi plus pi over 4. And tangent has a period of pi. So therefore, we can now get rid of the 9 pi. So this is negative tangent of pi over 4, which is equal to negative 1.